uh, even and odd numbers. One way we can classify whole numbers is by talking about whether or not they are even or odd. Here are some examples of even numbers and some examples of odd numbers. And we're going to go through and compare using lots of different descriptions what makes a number even or what makes a number odd. Um, first of all, the best definition that you'll see most common is that 2 is a factor of an even number. So an even number is any number where 2 is the factor. Remember that a factor is a number that you can multiply by something else to get a product. So 2 times something is going to give you an even number. On the other hand, 2 is not a factor of an odd number. So you're never going to do 2 times something to get odd, an odd number as a product. Another way to say the same thing is that an even number is divisible by 2. Basically all that means is if you take the number, like one of these numbers, and divide it by 2, you're going to get a whole number as an answer. It is um, going to give you an, without, without a remainder. On the other hand, if you divide an odd number by 2, you're not going to get a whole number. You're going to have a remainder, or you're going to have a decibel if you use a calculator. So an odd number is not divisible by 2. A way that you probably learned when you were in kindergarten or first grade to recognize an even number is what, what is in the ones place. It doesn't matter what's in the tens place or the hundreds place or the thousands place or any place bigger. What determines whether or not it's an even or an odd number is just the ones place. So if you see these digits, 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 in the ones place, then you can know that it's an even number. And on the other hand, if you see 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9 in the ones place, then you can know that the number you're looking at is an odd number. One way that I like to think about even numbers is that you can make um, sets of pairs with that number. Um, my, I gave my kids a bag of goldfish to share in the back seat while I was driving, and I told to my daughter, share with your brother. And so she gave herself one and her brother one, and herself one and her brother one, and herself one and her brother one. And if she had an even number of goldfish, she wasn't going to have any left over. She could make pairs, one for her, one for her brother, with however many it was if, it, if I gave her an even amount of goldfish. Well, most of the time, what ended up happening, strangely enough, is that there was always one left over. Her one, brother one, her one, brother one, her one, brother one, and there was one left over. That means that she started with an odd number of goldfish, and I always got to eat the extra goldfish. And you can also look at that pairs idea with a picture. Here's a picture of eight, and you can see that they're grouped in twos, and there are none left over. It makes a um, set number of pairs. The number 10 makes five pairs, so it's an even number. On the other hand, if you take a, an odd number and to bre break it up in pairs, in other words, you're really dividing it by two, and you try to make pairs, you're always going to have this one piece left over in an odd number. Here's 11, and you can see one extra left over, so you cannot make pairs with an odd number. So one of the main reasons that we're studying this in fourth grade is to be able to find patterns when you take odd and even numbers and add them or subtract them or multiply them. So I've created a chart here that's going to help us organize what we, the patterns that we can find when we add, subtract, or multiply two odd numbers or two even numbers or one of each. So in this whole column, we're going to talk about what happens when you take two even numbers and do an operation with them. In this column, we're going to see what happens when you take two odd numbers and do something with them. And here, we're going to take one of each. All right, so let's go through each one and we'll determine whether the result is an odd number or an even number. Here we are adding two even numbers, and I'm showing that here in a picture too, and we get an even number as a result. It makes sense because you're going to have pairs and more pairs. You're going to have pairs and none left over, if you think about it in pictures. So two evens added together is always going to be an even number. Let's keep going with adding. What happens when we add two odd numbers? Here's 3 plus 5, and here's a picture of that. See how in 3 you had one left over? And this is 5, and you had one left over. Well, when you match those two odd numbers, those leftover pieces match up and become another pair. So it's going to make an even number. So we get an even number when we add two odds. In each of my examples, I'm going to do an easy one for you that we can see with a picture, plus a harder one just to ver with larger numbers, just to verify by doing more than one problem that we are, in fact, getting a, a correct conclusion. And finally, let's add one even and one odd number. We can see in this picture we have a pair for two and then a group that doesn't have a pair here 
And when we do that, we have these pairs and this guy never found a friend, so it's still gonna make an odd number. Here's a harder problem that shows the same thing. So when you add an even and an odd number, we're gonna get an odd number as the answer. Okay, let's move down to subtraction or the difference. I have here my eight circles and I'm taking away an even number, which is gonna be a pair, all right, or more than one pair, if it's a bigger even number than two, and I'm left with pairs still, so it's gonna make an even number of six. We see a larger problem here that's showing an even number as the, as the difference. Now take a, an odd number and take away an odd, an odd number of, um, of disc, of circles. And when you see here that you take away an odd number, that's always gonna take out that one guy that doesn't have a partner. And that's gonna leave you with pairs there, one, two, three pairs, which makes six. So that's always going to leave an even number as the difference when you do uh, two odd numbers, one minus the other. Now let's do one even minus one odd number, or it could do it the other way around, an odd number minus an even number, it doesn't matter. I have here my 10, which is start starting out with all pairs, and then I take away an even number of circles, which means that that's gonna leave a, an extra here without a pair, without a partner, so it's gonna make an odd number as a result. All right, I think it's interesting, I hope you've noticed, that the sum and the difference follow the same pattern. Two evens make an even, two odds make an even, but for both of them, an even and an odd, both make odd as the answer when you're talking about adding and subtracting. Okay, now let's go to product and we're gonna see that it's not exactly the same for all of them. When we do four times two, I've shown four two times, so there's a group of four and a group of four, and we had pairs, 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 pairs. It doesn't change that, we keep even pairs every time. So this is going to make an even number. An even number times an even number is always gonna make even. Look at that, all the evens. If you have two even numbers, it's always gonna make an even if you're talking about adding, subtracting, or multiplying. Okay, let's go to two odds and multiplying here. I have three groups of three. That's what three times three it means. And you can see here that this, this odd and this odd match up and they make an, an extra pair there. So that much would have made an, an even number but add one more and we still have this guy right here that's hanging out without a partner. So that's going to make an odd number. Same with the bigger problem. So if you multiply two odd numbers, you're gonna get an odd number as the answer. And then finally, one even and one odd for multiplication. I have four rows of three. And when we do this, it causes these um, partners to match up. These two guys, that are the, these odd ones out, the odd numbers here that didn't have a partner, they get a partner, and these two get a partner, so it creates an even number when you multiply an even number times an odd number, or an odd times an even, the order doesn't matter. So this is going to make an even number as the answer. So we can see here that evens always make even, but we got a swapped um, conclusion here from the addition and subtraction. Interesting pattern there. So here's a problem that you might um, see in the future that would require to, you to use the information, the patterns that we just realized. Now, if you don't, you might, you can use your chart if it's a day that I say you can use your notes, but you might have to solve a problem like this without using your notes. I'm gonna sort of talk through how I would solve this problem if I didn't have my notes in front of me to just look quickly at the chart to see what kind of answer it's gonna give me. You're gonna notice on each one that I'm gonna start with a really simple problem, probably the easiest one I could think of off the top of my head, and then do at least one more to verify my answer, okay? So the sum, that makes is addition. The sum of two even numbers is even. All right, let's think of two really e easy even numbers. Two and four make six, that's even. So I agree, I'm gonna check that one off because it's true. I'm just remember I have to do each statement that's true, which tells me there's probably gonna be more than one or my answer could have more than one. The sum, that's again an addition problem, of two odd numbers is odd. Okay, so let's try two odd numbers. Let's do three and five. That makes eight. Ooh, that's not showing as an odd number. Let's do another one to double check. Oh, I forgot to do an extra one up here. Let me quickly go back and do that. Let's do um, eight plus six. 
made 14, which was again an even number. It's always good to verify yourself. So I'm going to do another pair of odd numbers. Let's do 9 plus 7. That made 16, which is not an odd number. So this one is not a true statement. We would not select that one. The difference, that is a subtraction problem, between an odd number and an even number is odd. All right, so let's do an easy odd number and an easy even number and I get one. So far that's looking good. My difference is an odd number. Let's do another one, a little bit harder. Um, let's do an odd number and an even number. Oh wait, I already got one as a difference. Let's try a different one. Let's do um, two and I get three, which is an odd answer. So that is showing that that's a correct statement or true statement. The difference, again, is subtraction between two odd numbers. So let's do two easy odd numbers, which are five and three, is even. So far so good. Let's try two bigger ones. Let's do nine and five. That again gave me an even number, so that is correct. So out of these statements, I would have selected the first one, the third one, and the fourth one as the statements that are true.